Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming to the video. If you want CPU news, well, you've come to the right place. We're going to start things out with AMD, where we have some information regarding the Zen based Optron processors. For example, they're going to feature 8 channel DDR4 support and many other details. We'll get into that in just a moment. And then we'll jump right to Intel, where there's been a small update regarding the overclocking news for the non K Skylakes. But first, AMD. So, as you probably are aware by now, and if not, you've probably been un living under the equivalent of a rock, Zen is the new processor architecture from AMD, which of course is going to be released this year and next year, and eventually we're going to see variants of it trickling to Zen Plus in maybe 2017-18. It's not been 100% confirmed yet. However, recently... AMD have been very aggressive with their claims regarding the server market and as we all know their position in the server market has really taken some hits over the last several years. They did for some time with their Optron major processors really have a decent portion of the market share but Intel and other companies have really started to put the squeeze on them to, to the point where they're not really a relevant force anymore. However, Zen, at least according to AMD, is going to change many of these uh, of these uh, situations, if you will. So, a computing engineer at CERN, his name is Olivio Valson. I say that's his name, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly, I'll spell it out for you. L-I-V-I-U, and then Valson, V-A-L-S-A-N, uh, was showcasing some of the details for the upcoming range of Optron processors, which of course will feature Zen. So, essentially, at the moment, AMD's processor lineup for, once again, Opteron is a little old. It dates back to 2011, which isn't exactly archaic, but it's not exactly new. So, the slide details several really important points. The first is that it's going to be running on a 14nm FinFET process technology. Not terribly unexpected, with heard many confirmations slash murmurs slash rumours depending how far back you want to go so pretty expected another thing that's also been hinted at very heavily is 40% improvement per instruction per clock compared to current generation of AMD processors support for 32 physical cores using symmetrical multi-threading we'll get into what that means in just a moment support for DDR4 unsurprising however for Opteron this goes all the way up to eight channels that's a lot of memory bandwidth and then unsurprising once again PCIe generation 3.0 support now some would listen to this and say to yourself uh, well there's something a bit weird here because aren't there also reports of an exascale processor or at least the equivalent. In other words, people are getting a bit confused where you might have heard of an APU which features GCN cores, DRAM, HBM in other words, um, and a whole bunch of CPU cores using the new interconnect which uh, AMD are pioneering known as coherent fabric which basically means that the GPU can easily speak to the memory, or the well more specifically the uh, the um, HBM memory and the CPU can also write to that memory as well and 100 gigabytes per second which is obviously considerably faster than what PCIe allows but this is actually very different from the Opteron so the Exascale is the APU just for clarification's sake whereas the Opteron is just CPUs it would be the equivalent of you going out right now to Amazon and buying so in FX 8350, it just has CPU cores on it, whereas on the other hand, of course, if you were to buy an AMD APU, then obviously you get the GCN cores as well as the CPU. Now, what companies will probably do will obviously be vary their uh, processor requirements accordingly, which is not really a surprise to anyone. But there are a couple of really important things we did learn here. So... One is that it's likely AMD are going to be focusing on an MCM design, which is very similar to what they're doing with their Optron 6300 series, 6300. So, for example, you can pick up the 6380, which packs two 8-core pile driver CPUs on a single die. Essentially, it acts almost like a single processor. Well, 
you know, with multiple cores. And from what we can tell, Zen-based Optrons are going to do very similar types of things. You're going to have multiple core, m multiple packages on the same die, essentially, and all of those are going to work equivalently to a 32 core Optron chip, which is absolutely gargantuan. Now, as I mentioned, AMD will actually be uh, using symmetrical multi-threading or simultaneous multi-threading or whatever the hell you want to call it. You could basically assume that this is the same as Intel's hyper-threading, but with a few differences. Obviously, Intel um, and AMD are probably going to implement the technology slightly differently. Unfortunately, we don't quite know what a AMD are doing. All we know is that they are tweaking it, which is probably more like we're tweaking it for, to make the most of our architecture. And unfortunately, we don't really have, let's say, die shots or exactly what they're doing to the cores because, well, that would be rather silly of them to release that type of information at this point. But all of this means that essentially for the Optron, we should see 32 cores, which means 64 threads, which is an absolute ridiculous number of processing threads. And you may say to yourself, well, who the hell's ever going to use that? But once again, if you start looking at large data companies, you can really quickly start to tap out the limits of hardware. And that's just how things are at the moment. And once again, we can probably assume that it will contain um, coherent fabric support. However, unfortunately, some of the details, for example, how much uh, cache it has, for, for example, how much level 3 cache it has, the max number of PCIe lanes, all of those details are still a little ambiguous. Obviously, it will support, once again, PCIe Generation 3, but the exact details of that are still a bit of a mystery. It does, however, look like we're going to be seeing the processors introduced in 2017. To go back to previous statements from AMD, and this is certainly not verbatim, essentially they do want to work on the desktop lineup first, and then they feel that they can start entering the server market. Personally, from my own standpoint, I think that's a good option. Get one base done first, then start moving into the next area. Whereas on the other hand, you know, they're still trying to find their feet with a brand new architecture, so it's a lot of stuff to juggle. Do remember that 2017... Well, 2016 to 2017 is not like Intel are just going to be sitting with a thumb up its ass. 2017, we're going to see the introduction of the next generation of Intel processors, specifically aimed at servers. We should see, for example, the Perly architecture, which really means that Intel are bearing all of the stuff it's learned from the desktop, for example, from Skylake to the enterprise level market. It's unknown really how the two are going to stack up. If you believe AMD, they say that they can address 80% of the server market. However, that doesn't necessarily equate to the same level of performance. However, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Now to the Intel news. So, it's been reported for some time. There have been murmurs, and then it was pretty much confirmed that Intel were asking motherboard vendors to not allow overclocking with non-K processors. I won't go through the whole story, but just to summarize, as you're probably aware, if you own a 6700K or 4770K or something like that, you can easily overclock your processor by simply adjusting the multiplier in Intel, allow you to do this very easily. You've got full voltage control, you've got access to basically all of the buttons and knobs that allow you to increase the clock speed of your processor and better the performance. However, if you opted to buy, let's say for the sake of argument, a 6100, which was a very popular uh, processor for some short time on the uh, new Skylake architecture, you were not able to do that. However, motherboard vendors decided to essentially circumvent Intel's lockdown by allowing you to increase via the base clock. Also, old folks might know it as the FSB, essentially. However, once again, Intel have said that they and want, this is a quote, company does not warrant the operation of the processor beyond its specifications. Now there is some level of confusion on how they're doing this and how they're actually enforcing this, but it does seem to be on a voluntary basis. So I'll read out the correct quote, well the relevant quote. Intel regularly 
up the issues updates for our processors, which our partners voluntarily, I'll say that again, voluntarily, in other words, there's no gunman outside, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, incorporate into their BIOSes. The latest update provides to partners include, among other things, code that aligns to the position we do not recommend overclocking processors that have not been designed to. And then essentially the spokesperson, whoever it is, really then pushed on the fact that Intel does not warrant the operation of processors beyond its specifications and it will not support the warranty, it will not give you cookies, and if you do it you will get slapped on the wrist, essentially. Now, some vendors have already done it and others are murmuring that they may start. For example, ASRock, yup, you guessed it, they've already done it. And other motherboards can really push the clock speeds. For example, it's not uncommon to see a 6100 pushed to the mid 4 gigahertz range, which is pretty darn impressive considering that the clock speed of the processor retails around 3.7. Is it going to beat a 6700K for high-end tasks probably no but considering the price difference you can start seeing how users are going to be a bit turned on by it now the fact that intel are doing it as volunteer you know it's a volunteer basis it's good and even if your motherboard vendor once again let's just pick on asrock since they're one of the companies that have capitulated to this to these shenanigans Let's assume that you did do that. You don't have to go ahead and update your BIOS. You don't. And theoretically, I imagine it wouldn't be that difficult for most vendors to be able to allow you to downgrade the BIOS. Once again, this is all assuming that the, that the older BIOSes are readily made available. And let's face it, even if ASRock or whomever else remove those BIOSes from their website, it's not particularly difficult to set up a mirror of those BIOSes somewhere and we all know that that would happen so it's not like you would be shit out of luck. The reason I dislike this however is I think it kind of sucks for companies in that I imagine they are feeling some pressure from Intel. Let's face it if Intel asks you to do something as a motherboard vendor you're at least gonna want to consider it because it's Intel. Now would Intel be able to do this if Zen was already out and Zen was kicking all sorts of butt? Probably not. But once again, we all know my opinions on, you know, domination in the market. It's not good. Domination equal bad, at least in this case. So, unfortunately, my advice to you is the following. If you have whatever processor that's a non-K that you are overclocking through the BIOS. First of all, you're not supported by a warranty. However, one can argue how likely is it Intel can find out about this. Well, it depends on the retailer and all that stuff. And the most important one, and the one that's probably most applicable, because let's face it, unless you're really cranking up the clock speed and really unlucky, you're probably not going to kill your processor um, through clocks, unless you're like ridiculously going over the recommended voltages, for example, if the processor's voltage is like 1.1 or 1.2 or something like that, you don't want to put in like 5,000 volts for it because it's probably not going to do the thing good. But in many cases, if you're doing a, you know, a medium overclock, you're probably not going to break the thing. However, the big thing, if you want to update the BIOS, however, honestly, once the system's running fine, once again, I probably would not update the BIOS. I mean, there are some instances where a BIOS update can be handy. For example, it might increase the support of memory, or it might increase the support of processors, or something like that. But generally, BIOS updates, not really going to do anything for the performance. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.